I'm so grateful, really incredibly grateful that I met you and that you were able to heal me. Mm, well, thank you. <sighs> uh, I don't think I would have been able to be healed had I not previously experienced a miracle of healing. Mm. So when I, when, I, um, when I got a hole in my head from a car accident, being hit by a car, mm. I went to see all these doctors and went to hospital and they said, oh, what a pity, it will never, you'll always have a manky scar there. And then I went to see His Holiness, Dalai Lama, and he said, uh, some people believe that if I pray for them, they will be healed. I said, well, that's wonderful. And he said, would you like me to pray for you? <laughs> I said, yes. And then he waited again, so I finally understood you have to ask permission. It, it's almost as if you have to have a willingness. I think that's always one of the, the, the absolute gateways, isn't it, to being accessible to healing it and change, is, actually. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's resistance that we have. I mean, three times he gave me a hint, mm. and finally I said, may I ask you, please, would you try and heal me? Mm. And um, of course he then prayed, and then I had a miracle healing, and then I was absolutely shocked and horrified and terrified that I had been healed, because I think uh, we all identify with, I've got this problem or that problem or, you know, I'm wounded somehow and then when this wound is healed, it's unnerving. <laughs> well, I think with any form of dis-ease, you know, and it's interesting how we can dissect the word because it is about one's not totally in harmony, let's say, or in the condition you wish to be in. Um, I think it's quite important, as we said before, that we have the willingness. But th there are other emotions come with that, of course. I mean, w when one has a any sort of situation, problem, challenge, there can be psychological things like guilt and all sorts of things come up mm. beyond just the human or physical situation you're in, let's say. So it's complex. It's a, it's a sort of myriad of different things. But the fact that in our case, it was, for me, such a great joy that sound could act as the catalyst for change in your life. I, um, I mean, I totally celebrate and honor that. I had no idea that was going to happen. Mm. And it was, it was an incredible healing. I mean, I lost my voice because of trauma. I was threatened uh, by a judge who said, if you speak about what goes on in this courtroom, you will be sent to jail. And then I was issued with an order uh, a gagging order with a penal notice attached. And literally, a gagging order with a penal notice attached, and there it was. If I opened my mouth about what was going on, I, I w would have gone to jail. And I was threatened and threatened and threatened. And at one point, I don't know, it, somebody leaked something, certainly not me, but I was accused of it. And they all came in, and I, I was nearly sent to jail for something I didn't do. But I was traumatized by it, and I lost my voice completely. Not only did I lose my voice uh, and singing voice, but my speaking voice dropped about an octave, and um, and I couldn't listen to music, Tim. It was incredible. I mean, I would be in the car or something, and I'd turn the radio on, and the <clears throat> emotion of of music, the vibration of it, would would somehow make it, I would just cry, and I couldn't actually be around music. Um, so I was living in this eerie silence, both inner silence and outer silence, until literally you came round and, um, and, and healed me with your forks and your, <laughs> and your voice, your voice. Yes, yes. And then I, was the vibe, I remembered thinking, oh, that's how they clean diamonds. Yeah. You know, they immerse a diamond into some liquid and then set a tone. Well, everything is vibration, and obviously sound music is, is the paramount example of that. But uh, it, it's fantastic to think that something as simple as the way we approach it, because there was no real design to do it, was there? I think yeah. the key thing for me, because I don't have my own piano at home, that, that you had such a beautiful piano, and it was always <laughs> such a pleasure to visit you for, let's say, a morning coffee, yeah. and I would play a little bit. And then you happened to have a couple of very amazing forks that I recognized immediately and thought, well, let me try these for you. And it was very spontaneous, wasn't it? It was. It was almost led. I mean, I didn't even expect it. I wasn't looking to be healed. I never thought I would be healed. Mm. I thought, oh, that's just a period of my life. 
and I hobble along slightly damaged and not be ever be able to sing again what a pity mm -hmm. but I didn't <laughs> think it was you know not a not a not a visible disability it was a, a bit of a shame but uh, something I was living with and I had been living with um, I've been using the forks for the crystals yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. and uh, didn't realize it was just amazing synchronicity literally and I don't even play piano that was my daughter's piano you came in sat down and I was just like <sighs> also the music that you play the vi it, it's also it, it's almost like it's um it's a visual experience mm. because you're painting a, a, a landscape with your music and I could feel the breeze, I could <laughs> you know, see the water, it was mm. beautiful. I think the beautiful thing with music is um, if we're able to uh, absorb and get inside as we play and we're thus listening to the new notes as well as producing them, you're becoming at one with it. And music anyway, and this is, this is for you why it's so wonderful, because it's a tragedy one to have this silence within mm. one, the whole aspect of enjoying music and, and the arts, which are so paramount to our quality of life to a mm. degree. But um, it, for me, obviously, the, the, the motivation was you had such a beautiful piano. I always <laughs> remember, it, and I had the same thrill. Mm. It was just to play in, literally, I would sort of, do you remember? I would sort of sit yeah. down and just sort of go... And likewise, I would listen, and it would give us that moment of relaxation <laughs> where it would almost calm you. And um, I mean, you were you were it, very very kind to let me play in, in your in that situation. I I, I I I lay down. There was nothing else <laughs> I could do, except when you started to play, yeah. I went to the sofa. And I literally lay down. I thought, well, okay, so I'm going to cry, or I didn't. It just washed over me, kind of washed through me. It was like a clean. It was like being under a waterfall of music, and I felt incredibly cleansed. And then when you came with the forks, and I actually felt the vibration of it, that was that was transformational. That like shook off all the trauma, literally, as if as if I was coming out of an eggshell or something. I could feel dirt of trauma, like the clingy, icky. uncleanness of it literally falling away it was the most beautiful thank you so much well, thank you again it, and again and again well totally my pleasure and, and my joy beautiful. but but for the fork specifically what was so interesting is that you were very enlightened in terms of what you had because they were actually quite specific tunings i mean this is when we go into dare i say the science and mathematics of music which you know i won't kind of bore you with you too should. much but there are specific frequencies and um, vibrations per second that have a particular effect upon the body, on the matrix of the body. And indeed, as we receive sound, believe it or not, it changes 100% of the cells, respiration, blood pressure, digestion, and the brain waves. It balances the left and the right hemispheres of the brain. So it's quite miraculous, its total effect. Um, I mean, to sum that up, for all that sort of rave about how, how wonderful that is, we are vibrating beings. I mean, mm. if we get mm. super esoteric on this, I mean, we are beings of sound and light vibrating, but I mean, this is taking us into a dimension of a, a day's workshop where we can explain this, obviously. But, but it is about reactivating. So it's an activation, fundamentally, and it's bringing you back into the core of your true self, just through certain frequencies, certain sounds, and applying them through the ear, which is then, as I said before, affecting the body. So miracles do happen. They, every day they happen. And I think that the more miracles you experience, the easier it is to receive. Yeah. Because you just don't, I mean, I, I totally, I had no resistance to you doing, I didn't even, we didn't even really discuss it. No. But you went for the piano and I thought, <laughs> okay, I'll just lie down and what will be will be. I ex totally expected to freak out and cry, but, <laughs> no, no, no. but I didn't and it was just, um, I think you you totally know what you're doing, <laughs> well, and and it is yeah. it you are a master, <clears throat> and so and so there I I was able to receive without any resistance. Yeah, I mean for us all it's a journey of discovery, but it's so interesting we talked about miracle because I'm just having to lean down to find an appropriate fork here actually, 
But we have here, um, so we, you know, we're talking, and we, we must explain, actually, yes. so people can actually see what we're talking about. So these are tuning forks. Um, this is, I'm going to strike it on this, that's all that is. And basically, I'm holding it at the bottom. But what happens, so this is a, so this is a frequency. But just to give you a little bit of technical analysis on this, this is 528 vibrations per second. That's, we need, that's a rule, we can just forget that after that. But what this is within the framework of musical scale is described as uh, the miracle frequency. And this 528 has the capacity to, well, what does it do? Um, first of all, it, it absolutely ignites the heart into, so it's a heart chakra thing. Mm. And this is obviously the energy discs in our body as we have mm. them. But it comes within the scale as what we call the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, mi. We're into the sound of music, kind of, you it. know, whatever. But the mi, of course, is short for miracle. It is a miracle frequency. <laughs> and they use it in the in um, scientific laboratory. At the moment, they're in investigating restructuring human DNA with it. Now, see, that's a very easy thing to say. But what are the implications of that? Again, it's what I said at the beginning, that we are these extraordinary mathematical beings mm. and there's this matrix running through us and it goes beyond the normal things we, we experience as being human mm. and I think this is the beauty of music that it acts as this pivotal doorway to show us the more sacred element the more divine element of both who we are and of what the beautiful world around us is so I think we get caught up in all the other distractions, don't we? I think that the, the, the language is very clear. When we talk about uh, raising our vibration, yes. this, is what, this is what we, are, we all understand. And actually, it's so simple. Raise your vibration. Yes. And every uh, spiritual workshop or uh, you, you know, self-help uh, course that one might want to do, everybody's always talking about you know, that you need to lift your spirit, lift your spirit, raise your vibration. Mm -hmm. And um, there's nothing really that will do that more accurately than tuning. Well, well this is it. And, and it's actually a simple process, because as you know, what I tend to work with, and, and I remember we did this, there's a little bit of the breath. Do you remember mm. we're taking a deep breath, um, as we do, you're taking deep breath into the nose, into mm. the deep down with the diaphragm. Yogic breathing. But then letting it go. Huh? So there's like a release, an exhalation, where you're truly letting, letting go, go of anything that's holding you back, let's say. But also, I, I know from my own um, healing, if I'm giving or receiving, um, it's very important to, to first of all, start uh, on, a, on a breath with the, with, the other, with the person who needs healing yes. or is giving the healing. Because if you're of one breath, then you start on the same vibration. You start in the same pattern. You're starting on the same platform. And it's something psychological as well about sharing a breath. I'm not talking about exchanging breath, mm. which is a Buddhist practice of healing, mm. but just it's like holding a hand, isn't it? That you, that you. It's a connection, isn't it? There. Inhale at yeah. the same time. Exhale. Yeah. Ground yourself, and then you start. Mm. And yes, we're on the same page then. Very well put, and it's exactly my thinking too. Mm. Total mm. philosophy. If I work with an individual or indeed large groups. Easiest thing for the connection is, uh, I usually do three. We do mm. sort of two big breaths, and the third one's like a sort of calm, gentle release. And then people are ready. Um, I mean, I used to get signed to have to um, open up for speakers like Neil Donald Walsh <laughs> and um, Deepak Chopra. And it would just be a 10 minute segment before I kind of go, ladies and gentlemen, you know, the wonderful whatever. And I would just get everybody to breathe, and it would prepare everybody to receive the deeper message that these fantastically inspirational speakers could deliver to them. So it's all about us being receptive. That's right. So we go back to what we originally said, the willingness, the receptivity, then we have the tools via, I mean, for me, what do I yes. say, hand on heart through music and sound. Yes. I mean, I feel so privileged to work in that field, of course. It's a magic art. It is magic. Yes. And it, go, it, it basically, it, it's like, you see the effect of it, but you never actually see how it works it's because it, it's, it's magical. And it, it's invisible, <laughs> it's isn't it? Invisible. It's invisible. We, we cannot touch it, but it touches us. It's like, as Holiness once explained, uh, when trying to explain the, the power of prayer, mm. okay, the power of thought, and mm, when students were resistant, and it's like, we don't understand that, how can we can't see it, touch it, smell it, 
therefore does it really exist? And so the explanation was beautiful. He said, you see the, the trees out there? Yes. Well, you see the movement of the leaves in the trees? Yes. Well, how is that happening? Well, that's the wind blowing. Well, so you believe that the wind is blowing and that's the effect. Therefore, the prayer, the music, the vibration, the effect will be there. You don't need to see, see the act. The wind doesn't need to be colored. Absolutely. So, so it's the same, basically the same principle. I mean, it's interesting as we talk about this, it, it, it makes me aware that perhaps we're moving into an era where we as humans are becoming perhaps more awakened again to, to these ancient, or this ancient knowledge, um, and maybe it is of the correct time with the world needing it a bit more, um, about raising vibration, but, you know, d deeper significance, the way that sound can affect us and indeed our psychic abilities, and as you mentioned before, the, the potency of prayer which is beyond just a mental thought process, isn't it? There's obviously something going on here. Totally. Well, it's emotional as well. I mean, when you, when you pray, it's like blowing out your candles on your birthday cake or something as a child. You remember looking at your little child and seeing the intensity on their face when you say, make a wish, and they, they totally make a wish, really, really make a wish. You don't see that when they grow up as much. <laughs> Maybe all the wishes didn't come true or something, they lost their faith a bit. But it is important to pray wholeheartedly and to visualize uh, the prayers being answered so that instead of this sort of grasping feeling of wanting and needing your prayer to be answered, you, you think, in your case with, with you, I, I, I totally had an expectation that I would be healed. Mm that, uh, and I was, um, it, di it didn't cross my mind that I wouldn't be in this the same way. If you pray expecting that now that your prayer has been heard or you've been able to focus it in, in, in your mind and ask for what it is that you want or need, it will be heard. Yeah. If you're on the same vibration, it, again, it's a vibrational, yeah. a vibrational frame of mind and being. It's emotional. It, it's an awareness and an openness. And it reminds me, I know we were talking some time ago about my own experience that got me mm. more into music, using music as a therapy, as a, a tool of healing. And it was because in 1988, I was actually poisoned by um, some industrial water, aluminium sulfate in the water supply when I lived in Cornwall. I'll try and make this a quick story because again yeah. it, it could be long. But I suffered a sort of element of um, uh, paralysis that really affected my, in those days, more virtuosic classical flute playing, let's say. And it persisted, unfortunately. So I then had to, with time, both come to terms with that but also seek a solution. By chance, I, and I'd never really been encouraged to sing or use my voice before that, but I just started to hum and create just singing simple vibrations in my body as opposed to struggle mm -hmm. to play the flute, let's say, externally. And I found almost miraculously after a number of days that I started to feel nerve regeneration. Oh. So this is what opened my eyes to, to the whole aspect where we could use this as um, a, a tool to serve us. Mm. And, and indeed, when we look at even life's purpose for most people, I mean, it suddenly gave me a meaningful purpose that I realized that beyond creating music that could act, let's just say, as a wonderful entertainment for people, mm. and obviously we, we all love music mm. uh, of all different qualities and styles, but to think that you can harness some aspects of it that then let's say, and I use the word carefully here, medically or, or physically affect you um, on a physical and indeed a mental level, mm -hmm. and beyond that a spiritual level, mm -hmm. then we have something very potent here that um, if we mould it and sculpt it the right way, I mean, what a gift that we can use. So Totally, but you use it so beautifully. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, real, really, it's, uh, it's an art form because uh, I can, f you know, I can actually feel it. Mm. I can feel, and throughout the diff your voice, for instance, I picked it out of one. Once you've attuned to someone, and I've, I've attuned to you, um, I'll be able to pick your voice out of a whole chorus, which I did the other day when uh, I was listening to some recorded music, and it was music, 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 and I thought, oh, that's Tim's 
Tim's humming. <laughs> and it was the humming as well yeah, that, yeah. that set up this vibration. Yeah. And I think, I think when I, now that I'm aware of the healing properties of it, I notice it in other people, particularly children. Yeah. They hum to themselves and it seems that they calm. It's a calming thing. We sing to our children yeah. lullabies. We put them to sleep. It's well, babies girdle to themselves, don't they, they I do. guess, if thinking about it, actually, in, in the, the cradle, etc. So it's one of these yeah. everyday miracles which we don't yeah. see. Well, I, I always fear, and this is a, a, a rather tragic point, that there's a lot of people, unfortunately, shamed around using their voice or yes, singing. Yes. I mean, it's just a historical, sociological fact. Mm. And part of my work, in the small capacity that I can offer it, is to encourage people to open their voice again, to give them that faith back in themselves. Mm. It's all, to a degree, all this is about self-empowerment, in the gentlest way, isn't it, really? Well, for me, it was really about healing from a deep trauma. I had no idea. It, well, I didn't even, until you literally struck the note, mm. I had no idea why I had become so overly sensitive, almost panicked around music, because, of course, it was, it was the gagging. It was the being gagged and it, any form of expression, singing, humming, speaking, you know, it was... Yeah. Effect, deeply affected by yeah. the mind, by the, by the fear, by the fear of, of ex being, going to jail if I express myself. I think, <laughs> I think gagging is such an appropriate <laughs> word. I mean, literally, it's as though if someone oh, physically had done I, this to you. I, I totally. And maybe then that affects how you want to listen and the whole thing closes down. Shut down completely. See, what's going on, um, again, I'm just picking up a different fork here. So again, I've explained the mathematical things. I mean, this is uh, 111 hertz. This is actually a very significant one. It's kind of almost like this kind of mother tone. But what you describe is very interesting, actually, because it gives people an insight into beyond just, this is a, mm, I don't know if people can hear that, but that's a, mm, this is the, the frequency. But what's and going like on beyond me listening to it like that, of course, as you say, you can do this with it. <sighs> now, this is called sonopuncture and it's the the musical equivalent of acupuncture on the meridian points here it's on the yeah. sternum you can obviously do it on the crown on the third eye all, all manner of mm. places and it truly through the meridians brings the body alive and oh. i am so so delighted it was amazing i mean to I, see that it was amazing it was as you know i mean i stopped jumping around and <laughs> so happy <laughs> Yeah. It was like, yeah. it was like, I don't know, it was freedom. Really. I, th I think the joy now is the fact that you totally love music. I totally love I mean, love it's, music. it's fantastic. And I love listening to you play. Oh. It's such a treat. And then, you know, it connected to me because, excuse me. Yep, no, of course. We had this, I had this, it was one of the forks, I think, that you saw in the, ha in the yes. house when you came over. Yes. And I had been um, using, uh, using crystals in my work as, as a yogi. So I'd been using the chakras, um, and I'd been been clearing as much as I could, uh, just using crystals and, and chakra work. So this um, one of my teachers is a is a rocket scientist, and she, I mean, I'm so impressed with any science, but a rocket scientist. She was working on the program for Mars. And she um, was collecting crystals to use for science. Mm -hmm. And she uses this tone, which you'll tell us about. A432, which is an ancient pitch. There's a connection to Pythagoras, the ancient Greek mathematician, etc. This is a frequency, again, we're going to the science and the mathematics of it. But it correlates to the circumference of the Earth, the distance of the stars and the planets. Because actually, Pythagoras, just to, just to give a little key indication of this, he was extraordinary because he came up with the concept of what he calls the music of the spheres, which means he um, could see through his calculations the fact that the literal Earth we live on, planet Earth, is vibrating at a particular frequency, as are all the other planets in the constellations in, in the cosmos. And it, again, it's kind of, it feels like it's sort of newfangled, but this is so ancient. The, these are our ancestors going way back. Um, so it's extraordinary and very insightful that she should be using that particular frequency, A432. So she uses this frequency yes. to clear. Yeah. So this will now be grounded, according to Diane Sober. This crystal will be grounded, therefore cleared of any other influence or any vibration that it picked up. 
of course, if it's in a room where people are arguing or people are singing or the crystals are sensitive, so you do need to clean them, clear them, or ground them. And it was just so interesting to me that she used um, she used tone. So Fantastic. It it's back. so yeah. profound, isn't it? And it's interconnected with that. This is, I think, one the 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 how the Buddhists understand and the yogis understand that uh, we're all interconnected and that any action I take or don't take when I should take <laughs> is going to have a you know profound ripple effect. And I don't think it's, I, I think this is the language that needs to be used, both voice, when you speak to someone, it's, animals can sense it, what your intention is, it comes through the voice, through the vibration. You're so right. Let's take, let's take a breather for a minute. I'm do one breath together. We'll do because we've talked about that before. So we're going to breathe in through the nose, and people, anybody watching this, can join us with this. You're breathing in through the nose, deep down into the diaphragm, the belly, expanding that, and just we're going to let it go through the mouth. It's a good practice for us both, mm. for us all actually. So big breath in, and we're going to let that go. Ah. What we're trying to achieve, of course, is a, is a point of relaxation where by taking the breath in, we're able to open the mouth wide and drop the jaw. Because what is extraordinary, we hold much of our um, tension here on the jaw. So this is a key area where we can give ourselves, again, permission, it's always this thing, of allowing that to relax and just coming back into ease. I mean, let's try to, you know, we'll try this art of breathing that many of us have forgotten or lost, mm. isn't it? And, and what it does, the effect, though, aside from it's obviously very beneficial, but it, by assisting to give us, let's say, a bit more strength down in the diaphragm, mm. it puts us in touch with our gentle power. Because if you think, if, if you're doing martial, any yes, sort of martial arts, it's coming from this area of the nape of the hara. It's pushing in, it's ha, ha. You've got this energy coming from there. And the fact that we, with just the simple breath we're taking, we're letting go, ha. And letting go is the key word. Do you know why we actually, I sometimes tell this story. So in India, they actually catch monkeys this way. They create an earthenware vessel with a very thin neck to it. They put in whatever monkeys like to eat for breakfast. Peanuts. Yeah, peanuts and <laughs> whatever is in there. And the monkey, you know, they place this in the jungle. The monkey sort of sniffs the whole thing out. The hand goes in. He finds his peanuts. He's holding them in his hand. He's bringing them up. But the narrow neck of the vessel, <coughs> because he's got a fist, he can't release himself. Now, this is where we have the parallel running. The monkey at that moment has the choice of, do I let go and become free? Mm. Or do I hold on and be captured by this? And of course, that's we all face these challenges and processes in our life. If, if, if you can recognize it, yeah. I mean, most of us just think, how, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, and mm. don't know how to let go. Well, we're back to the willingness. We, 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 yeah. uh, there has to be recognition. Sometimes I think there has to be a desperation. I mean, it's... But I, mm. My knowledge when people have explained to me about addiction is they, they, they often use the expression you've got to be on your knees needing wanting seeking desiring yearning for change before you have that let's say that that, that moment of acceptance mm. um, I think that's the, a very paramount first step but after that of course we have the tools nowadays mm. even what we're talking about as simple as this sounds the mm. fact we're talking about a breath we can all do it again together mm. We're letting that go through an open mouth, ha. And then, let's say we've done a few more of those, we won't sort of elongate get that, but then do you remember in our situation, we would do that and that would, as we said before, give us a, a bonding. We're, we're on the same yes. vibration suddenly. And we're then, breathing course, the same, so it's and then, start. Rather like this beautiful piano, I would go to your magnificent piano, which <laughs> I do a love. And I, do you remember I used to just, yeah. for me, it's, it's a treat, because I don't have a piano at home, so this is the, the greatest treat for me. So it's just really 
finding that lovely sort of moment of repose with it and... Uh, now I just want to actually crawl into the vibration. Uh, I, I hear you on that, actually. It's fun, but, well, do you remember when you've experienced the gongs? <gasps> the gongs. Because that's a whole story in its own, because these are these huge things which are tuned to the planets. Again, we're talking about this whole cosmos Is that the sacred... Vi yeah, sacred, yeah, we're yeah. back into the mathematical situation of Pythagoras, etc., etc., um, which is a bit technical. But, but, but fundamentally, yes, we've got a lot of big gongs, and don't they take us all into this deep inner space yeah. it's a sort of uh, outer space you're coming closer to your dimension of well dare i say it's almost like probably the process before we're born and after we leave this earth i mean maybe yeah. there's a whole point where we are in a different dimension this um, on this result well this. it does seem to bring you into a different dimension and i remember going to your gong bath yeah. very self-conscious going into a going in i was because i'm so i guess i'm so hermit like I yeah. never go out, so for me to go into a room full of people was like, mm. and um, and then lay down on the floor, and then literally this incredible wash of sound coming over, and you could yeah. feel it like waves, and it rippled through, rippled up from the floor. I'm. Do you remember when we put some water on the piano at one point, mm. and we're seeing it vibrates. And that was very profound, the, the gong. Well, we, do you know, if you talk about water, so we're going to a whole new dimension of knowledge. You're going into um, Emoto from Japan, the, the, this whole yeah. theory of the fact that, as he describes it, messages in water. What you project as a message in terms of, you know, they've had a, a glass of water and someone could project, let's say, negative thoughts or a words word, towards yeah. it. I mean, I, I, I don't usually, I'm encouraged yeah. not to use the word H-A-T-E. Yeah. It's not a very productive word. But if you're having that, then it's not, not a great vibration. The converse of that, when you come into love, positive vibration, the water takes on a different molecular structure. Absolutely. You can and photograph course, it and, and it, you and can see it. And bear in mind, this is the inner part of our body. We're 70% water. Yeah. So the fact that we're using sound to create these different patterns. Now, and of course, here we go into a whole dimension called somatics, which is where we're creating these extraordinary prismatic mandala-like patterns. Yes. I mean, to come back as simple as when you see a snowflake put under a microscope, it is this extraordinarily beautiful perfection of pattern. And that's within us. And sound can obviously encourage and create this. Do you know when they make the mandalas, when the Tibetan Buddhist monks uh, make the mandalas, uh, they use a, a, a sort of a scraping uh, tool. So literally, as they hold the sand in this tool and they scrape it, a few grains will drop out and mm. they will have this vibration, you know, from the vibration. Obviously, the monks are repeating the mantras and the prayers the whole time that this is being made. But I've also seen sand respond literally to music, change its shape, uh, uh, like it's dancing. This is called somatics, and it is the shape that music makes, both externally and, as we said before, internally. internally. And of course, let's, I mean, this gives us the cue, actually, just to show you and share with you exactly what we were doing with the forks. So, do you remember, I'm going to, I've literally got two forks in my hand. The first one, 396 vibrations per second. It's a bit technical, I appreciate. But there is a, there is a clue to this. Um, the numbers I use are all part of what we call a Solvejo series. They're all part of derivatives yeah. of 369. Nikola Tesla, the great, in, prior to the car company, there was a gentleman who did invent free electricity within the universe 100 years ago. He used to say, if you want to understand the, the, the rules of the universe, you, you have to understand 369. Again, we're into the mathematics of creation, both of ourselves, the planet, and the cosmos. 396 on a fork, which is the smaller one, that's the pitch. This has the ability to prepare the body for healing mm, mm. and the removal of fear and guilt. I mean, how powerful is that? So we're getting into basically psychological aspects of sound beyond just the physical uh, benefits. But that's what I felt, Tim. That's what I actually felt. I mean, I felt clogged up and I felt like I had a crust. I had been I had some sort of mm. container. I was my emotions were being contained, yeah. and 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 there's 
and the the tone, whatever, whatever you did to Indeed. me, made me break. It made made the stuff just slough off. Can internally. I demonstrate this now? Yes, was that just the, the tone you used? I had no idea. Uh, what absolutely. You used so, on so the three nine six, I would have yes, come <coughs> over here. So I'm striking on this. Gives me a little thing, and then I'm coming into that ear. And let's say then I move it over to this side, and that in its own way immediately is affecting and balancing and bridging the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. So you've immediately got some connection going on within cerebral process. Again, I'm working on these top upper levels of this crown and the third eye. So there's a sort of little, and then, then you can work around the body. I'm just working in a clockwise thing, giving you like a good vibration. You can work in a figure of eight. And I'm working what we call the etheric egg. This is all around, you know, as we call it sometimes, the aura. Okay, I want to stand up. Oh, good, good. Because that's perfect, because now I'm going to come to the miracle frequency, the 528, immediately on the body. And just breathe that in. And the jaw relaxes. Come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you. That's a wonderful thing to say. Exactly. Keep the jaw relaxed. And for anybody that meditates, always key. Keep your jaw relaxed. You know, and your so there's nothing clenched. Now, isn't that like just bathing and something beautiful? Okay, this is like completely still going here. Yes, it's so nice. I want to give it to oh. myself actually. <laughs> mm. And then, do you remember I use the voice sometimes? So I, I might do just your simply. Voice. I love your voice. And it's just a pure sound using the voice, like something we call Tony. It feels lifting. Well, I know. I know. What, I mean, what a treat. So, thank you for, so for much. For me as well, I no, have to thank say. Thank you so much. <laughs> it really is. I don't know if that translates, you know, on film or whatever, but certainly. Uh, oh, it's yeah, certainly. it is a fantastic thing to receive. And do you know the beauty of this, as you know, is you can do it for yourself. You can self-medicate, of course. You can self-medicate, yeah. but I have to say, uh, working with you just now, mm. and also working with the breath, and listening to your voice, your voice uh, is very healing. It has, you have many tones in your voice. And so I think that the whole package, Tim. Can't oh, just, can't bless just you. take the bless floor. Thank it's you. the whole Thank package, you. Yes, yes, really. Yes. Because yes. your voice is so important. Your voice sets up a different vibration as well. And I, f I feel that. So, um, and I, I hear it now, I'm more attuned to it in other people as well. Mm. You can hear stress, you can hear, yes, you, uh, can. you can hear sadness, actually. Uh, you know. Yes, the, it, it's a good blueprint for your condition to a degree, isn't it, actually? Yeah. You can hear, and um, again, if we're into understanding the chakras and the micro chakras that all mm. exist within our body, yes, you can hear, it, it's basically showing you balance or imbalance stuff we need to work on. I mean, for us all, we're all a work in progress. I mean, every day is a process, as but, we know. But this is a beautiful cleansing. Mm. I mean, one should do this, I think. One, I think you should fork yourself every morning yeah. when you get up yes. and make sure you're tuned in, just like you would, you know, take your vitamins or do your stretches or your yoga sanas or... I quite agree. It's and it's interesting you should say that because, it, you do know, it much as we could do this and it's a discipline, but we, we could achieve this. But if you think of ancient societies, I mean, this is something we'd maybe lost with the advent of electricity and instant things coming at us. You know, our ancestors probably would have sung more yes. and, and made more of, of their artistic, you know, let's say, abilities within them. And, in, and nowadays we, we tend to receive, don't we? So we perhaps got to encourage ourselves to create because as we know, we live in an extraordinary creative universe and we are creative <coughs> beings. Mm. So maybe this is the lesson in our modern age, and particularly at this moment of time as we step forward at this time of extraordinary change where robotics are gonna control mm. us or control our lives more, because mm. I'll rephrase that. I think the aspect of that is, and I always say this jokingly, a bit tongue in cheek, it's about us harnessing the technology remaining the masters, not becoming the servants to it. So we can obviously utilise it to a degree, but, but more to recognise our human abilities. We, we are miraculous beings. We are. Well, birth is a miracle, isn't it? I mean, I always think it's marvellous that you go to the doctor if you're 
pregnant, I went to the doctor and I said, you know, when will the baby be born? Oh, the baby will, the baby will come when the baby wants to come unless you interfere with it. It is a force of nature. And they don't know. They can do all the tests, they can do all the sonograms, they can check everything out, but can they give you the, they can't even give you the day, let alone the time. And yet if you follow the moon cycle, mm you're more apt to correctly predict when your waters will break when the baby will be born because that there's a there's a there's a pull again we're in the area of uh, of etheric where we where, where things happen you can't see them you can't sense them with your other senses yeah. but you know so yes birth is a miracle and so life is the miracle we sometimes forget is so and get lost in the sort of the, the, the bit of the journey let's yeah. say and it is um it's very important for us to become uh, awakened both to the arts and to, to what we're perhaps talking about and finding this bigger picture, this dimension that does affect us and that we are part of fundamentally. I think the, uh, the vibration plays m more, it's more profound in our life than we actually uh, realize at, at every level. And you think, I'm reminded of the way that a vibration is a tone, just something simple a tone can affect matter mm. so greatly that the Tibetans, uh, again, I, I come back to the Tibetan Buddhist because that, I'm more familiar with that, um, but they uh, apparently play tones through their longhorns yes, yes. that then uh, rocks will actually Levitate. vibrate up off the ground. We're talking concepts of the pyramids, Stonehenge, We've been to biblical things of the walls of Jericho. So many aspects raising uh, the, these thoughts and philosophies around sound and vibration. And um, I mean, funny enough, at the moment I'm delivering a series of lectures and teachings and finishing actually a bit of an encyclopedia on, on music and sound. And part of one of the chapters is called The Ancient Medicine of the Future. And this is very much what it is. Mm -hmm. It's harnessing this ancient mm -hmm. knowledge, bringing it into play in our modern times which, I say, in my, in my observation, we need it more than ever now. Mm. Because as I mentioned before about this whole robotic age we're about to go into, it is about us not dehumanizing, but quite the contrary, to really find that, that the aspect of us that is truly divine, that is special, um, and is miraculous. Mm. Isn't it funny, when you go to the sea, you listen to the sound of the ocean, we all think, oh, that's so lovely. Yeah. And you f your heart beats in, so it sort of start you start to mirror the the sound of the ocean, and then you listen. To, you go through a walk in the woods, and you hear the birds, and you think, "How oh, lovely!" You end up in New York City, London, San Fran. I don't care where. Melbourne. You hear traffic, mm. you know, mm. uh, construction, all these noises, and they're great. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think it must be. A sort of a, a warning sign really literally we are better and we are better attuned and we are healed in nature mm -hmm. and when we co come to um, in too much contact with uh, with sounds and noises that literally are abrasive mm -hmm. it, it's damaging yeah, I, and that is an incredible thing you just said and I have to say that would open up we could talk for another hour, two, three, <laughs> on that very topic about how um, many of the sounds, much of the music we now hear it as, because I mean, bear in mind, music is a reflection of our society. We can hear nowadays how complex we are by the, the, the plethora of extraordinary variety of music. Um, some great, some not so great, but it's not for me to go to judgment, but I might like to play, yes, play us out just a little sort of a few notes on this yes, lovely, please. lovely piano because it's such a treat for me, I have to and say. All of us. the way it just floats into the ethers and what a joy it is and um, it's been very nice to, to share this oh, it's together. It's been such yeah. a, a gift. I mean for you to walk into my life and heal me like that was just amazing mm. and I, I'm really grateful that you're ha 
that you're willing to, you know, come and, ex and discuss it. it. It's a great joy. And I hope that other people get, get healed and understand how important music and, and just a simple tone is. Yes. It's really, well, I mean, it makes all the hairs on her, you know, rise up. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. Let us help Thank people you. raise their vibration and bring them to good vibrations. Absolutely and what we need. Pray it is. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, Thank Tim. You.